Hey YouTube, Z38 here. We're going to be talking about when to hold your hook. And I think this is a really important concept because we're, you know, as Thrush players, uh, we're very exposed to these false realities that you can just magically hit any of these like flash prediction hooks, etc. And it's not, on my YouTube channel, I'm pretty good at, like I only use ranked games really, so a lot of what I'm going to talk about like in this video is going to be kind of how I make it easier for myself to hit these hooks. But a lot of times other such channels and other people, they're like in a normal game flash like or hooking like a silver Ezreal player or something. And by watching those, like that's not actually going to help you in game uh, land hooks easier. So I'm going to go over in this video like why you should hold your hook and how that can help you actually... Uh, land your hooks so to start off if you haven't watched my zoning hooks video in the top right i would do that first because we're going to be drawing a lot of concepts from there okay so let's say we have your adc over here your jungler's coming in for a good old gank and you've got your enemy adc in support so the proper way to execute this is going to be holding your hook now let, i'm going to just run through the example a couple like scenarios so scenario one is you just randomly throw your hook here if this is an ezreal with his e up he has the potential of pretty much going anywhere from like here all the way to here yeah i bet i said like here ish so he can be anywhere there let's say you throw it you missed and now he just lives so scenario number one kind of sucks scenario number two is you run at him and by running at him all this way you keep chasing him down chasing him down so then you get into oops you get into this scenario now your jungler's here your adc is over here oh sorry and now he still has his e up but now look at the range for his e or like look at the range that you can for his hook it's like it's a definitely a lot smaller right he can probably e like as far as there maybe but then he the jungler would come in so he's kind of confined to this area so this is a big improvement from that other time where the area was like this big. So we've narrowed the range down by holding our hook. And now we can kind of just Hail Mary and throw our hook. And this is, in a lot of my montages, you'll actually see me. I'm probably more like up here sometimes. It just depends on the scenario. But a lot of my flash predictions are actually when the enemy is pretty much this far away from their turret or maybe a little less because I'm just hitting those Hail Mary hooks because I've narrowed my zone down, right? Like the enemy is only gonna be within this area. I've narrowed it down. My chances are really high now. So that's how I'm able to improve these hooks. You hardly ever see me landing some crazy flash hook prediction in like the middle of the lane because that's so hard to do. Like look at this huge range. So I, again, by running them down, You've now narrowed your chances, and let's say you hit it, you can kill him. If you don't hit it, then whatever, it only costs 70 mana. Okay, so that was scenario two. As you can tell, that was a big improvement from scenario one. Now we can go into a third scenario. Let's say, you know, it's starting off like the same. You still have like a jungler coming in, etc. But let's say, by running him down, you've actually really scared the, guy, the poor guy or something, and he ended up using his E already. Well, that's a huge win for you. Now this guy has no gap closer. So now this scenario should look really familiar because you have your jungler coming in for a gank, your ADC close by, the guy with no gap closers. This looks just like a zoning hook, doesn't it? So... There you go. Now you're in a zoning hook situation. You can just zone him from the tower, Lancer and your jungler. You know, it's a, it's a really big thing. So 
As you can see, scenarios 2 and 3 are much better than scenario 1. So again, scenario 1 was just like throwing your hook randomly over here. Scenario 2, we're running him down, and the guy's a really smart player. He's trying to save his uh, dash or, you know, gap closer for, you know, ever until you throw your hook. So, but by this time, the range is already super small, so you have a high likelihood of hitting your hook if he uses the gap closer. And then scenario three is the guy just got scared and he uses gap closer early, so now you can definitely hit a hook. So, by holding hook and not using it right off the bat, it increases your odds of hitting another hook, or it could clearly increase your odds of getting a kill if they use it, their gap closer early. Okay, so hopefully you're understanding that concept. Now, I want to move into something more like a mid-game or late-game situation. So we'll say we have allies. Okay. So let's say we're in this situation here. We have our your team behind you. You have their jungler. And let's say their team is kind of... You know, like over there or something. You can't see, but uh, let's pretend we have like vision over there and their teams over there. We technically have all the time in the world to run this guy down. We're supposed to have our Mobo boots or Swifties or whatever. Okay. I don't know how that works in practice mood, but we have all this stuff. Like, you know, our move speed is really high. We can chase this guy down. There's no way he's running faster than us. So by. Again, we gotta hold our hook here and chase him down. In none of my montages will you see me in a scenario like this, you know, trying to like flash hook or like, you know, do some crazy prediction because that's just not the right play. And I just really wanna clarify, like even in other montages, like these guys are playing normal games. They don't care if they win, they're just trying to get clips. And I just, I'm not sure how many times like you've been exposed to something like this, where it's just like an actual horrible play to make, but they're like, just, they're not trying to win. So if you're trying to win, you need to really, um, you know, hold your hook here and the same thing's going to happen. You can chase him down. You're going to catch up because you're super fast. You're way faster than this guy. He might use a gap closer. So let's say it was like even a Sejuani. So unless the Sejuani dash there. So now you can hit your hook way easier, right? You can lantern someone and yeah, really running them down is just such a good, it's just like so crucial to hitting your hooks because just by running them down, like again, it decreases the, their range of like motion. And if they already use their gap closer, it's so much easier to hit them. So yeah, I'm also going to, I'll give you an analogy also so let's say you're kind of new to support or let's say you play a lot of jungle if you're a lee sin jungle main right or if you're actually if you're just a good jungle lee sin you will know that when you gank you always ward hop right or you always walk up and like dash to your ally and use your e to slow them you never start off a gank with your q right as lee sin that's because your q is your main damage ability if you miss that, they're probably going to live. It's very similar to Thrash. If you miss this, they're probably going to live. So just like Lee Sin in a gank, you need to save this for when you can secure the kill, when you have the highest odds of getting that kill. And usually the highest odds of hitting your hook is not right off the bat. You need to run them down, make them use their gap closers, or put them in a scenario where they have... Um, a less like less room to escape all right hope you guys learned something i know that was kind of a different video but i think it just really goes to show you how these concepts do connect by like running down someone you can put them into a zoning hook situation right or just by running them down you can hit your hooks so much easier so i hope you were able to learn something and i'll see you next time